All righty. Welcome, everybody, to the first ever week of this whole summer months Elk Grove Library Summer Technology Programs. We have a great number of programs lined up for you guys coming this summer, starting in this week of June, June 8th, going till the end of July. There's going to be a bunch of programs which we'll be covering later on as we go today as well. But it's all going to be done through the Elk Grove Library. And it seems like we have a great crowd of people coming out here today to test out and try out what technology is and learn more about it. Specifically, today is going to be the first week of our introduction to programming course, a course which is going to be, you guys will learn more about it, but it's tailored towards learning about what is this idea of programming and what does the word programming even mean? We'll be getting our feet wet as well, learning what, how we can use our knowledge to actually do some programming in the coming weeks as well. So I have a bunch of great things uh, coming up, but it was great to see that we got a wide range of people coming from all over the spectrum, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, ninth graders. It is great to see that we got a lot of people here today. And hopefully you guys will be coming back after today. So do let me know, uh, as always, we're going through this. Any feedback you guys have, the chat is always open. You can always unmute some basic housekeeping rules. Nothing too formal out here. You can even turn your camera on. I won't say anything, I promise. But if you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to unmute. And yeah, so one thing I've realized now is that I have not even introduced myself. You guys have introduced yourself to me, but my name is Rayon Sneaky. I'm a senior who recently graduated from James B. Cohen High School. I know we have a couple of people going to Elk Grove High School in this uh, the meeting right now, but I did go to Conant. And about a week and a half ago, we had our graduation. So I just graduated from high school and this upcoming fall, I will be going to the University of Illinois at Chicago, majoring in uh, computer science. A little bit about me, over these past four years, I've become an avid user and person who loves creating things with technology. I've made apps for the App Store, made a dozen different websites. And along with that, I've written a novel earlier this year I published, which is available, fun fact, at the Elk Grove Library called The Switch Up. It's a personal story sort of based on my life about a realistic fiction character who goes through the four years of high school, the countless adventures he has, and how he finds his passion for technology. So I highly recommend that if you ever stop by the library or any library in the local area, whether it be the Schaumburg, Hoffman Estates, Hanover Park, uh, take a look at it. It would mean a lot. And I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that as well. And on the side for fun, I like to run a sports talk show with some of my friends. So that's a little bit about me. You guys will learn more about myself and I hope you do the same about you guys in the coming weeks as we go through uh, June and July. But for today, that's a little bit of an introduction. So we've already gone through and shared our names of schools, but if we, if I've not already called on you, which I believe everybody has gone. Uh, yeah, Prutha, do you want to share your name of school too? Oh my bad, I thought we had some people, I guess some people joined late, but they are not here anymore. So we are good, all right. Oh, and do you mind if I throw in just two just two seconds? Yep. My That's name is Rob. I am also uh, I also I have a degree in computer science, and I've been using Python for almost twenty years. I love it. It's a useful language, and it's a lot of fun. You can do really cool stuff with it. Well, well, you know, we got two two brains right here. Go learning a lot about programs. It's awesome to hear. I did not even know that, uh, Rob. So that's pretty cool. Well, a lot of resources that are going to be available to you guys, so nothing to get overwhelmed about. But let's get on started by going over an agenda. So basically how I like to run these classes is that it's important to know what we're going to accomplish on that certain day. And today is June 8th, and today's agenda is going to be pretty simple. So it is the first day. I want to keep it a bit lighter. Uh, just do some icebreakers, learn more about some details about the program, the summer, discuss our thoughts, and start having some discussions about what is programming and this idea of Rob just mentioned computer science, right? What does that even mean? And then at, towards the end, we'll be starting to talk about how we will approach programming and what we will be learning and how to apply some skills as the coming weeks come about. So you can always look forward to knowing what we're going to accomplish on every third day. And hopefully you have a good idea of what we will be doing now. And before we do dive deeper into our introduction to programming course, we do have many of the programs which will be running at the Elk Grove Library uh, this summer. So not only do we have introduction to programming where we will be learning about what the language of Python is about and learning about some of the fundamentals in programming, 
but also we have different courses such as Introduction to Web Development, which will be happening next month in July, where we will be creating websites and products in a different language called JavaScript, but that is for another month. This month's focus will be Python. We also have a one-time program called the Hack Club, where we will be learning about something called machine learning and seeing how cool it can be, seeing how it plays a pretty big role in our lives. And you guys will be learning about the, not only the code, but how it impacts us, such as the YouTube recommendation feed. You know, you get certain videos recommended to you on a daily basis. How does that work? So that'll be something cool to learn about. We also have a one-time program called a video editing course, where we will learn how to take videos from online. We can download from YouTube or any website and how we can edit them and make them look nicer, um, add special effects. So that will be happening as well. And then we also have a one-time gaming hour where it's gonna be more of a relaxed course. We come together, play some video games, learn about how the games are made and have a fun time with that. Now, all of these programs will be happening on specific dates uh, outlined out here. And I believe they're also available on the Elk Grove Libraries website if you go sign up online. If you have any questions, please let me know. I can drop you guys a link to sign up. But here are the dates we got uh, throughout June and July. So both of these months have a bunch of programs coming up. And as always, just make sure that you are registered just so you can get the Zoom link and join us for all the festivities. Yep, and as I'm going through guys, any questions, please do feel free to unmute or chat. All right, so let's get into some of the details about this program. So this will be happening on every Tuesday throughout this month of June. Like I said earlier, I'll be posting every day's content in case you miss something, you forgot the main idea of someday on the Google Classroom with the recap of each day, along with the link to the recorded video for you to go back to. The Google Classroom code is right there and I will also be dropping it in the chat for you. Has everybody here used Google Classroom if you want to give me an indication? Or if anybody has not, you can message me. All right, so here is the link to join the Google Classroom if you hit that. If you have a Google account, you can use your or your parents and you can simply go ahead and join our classroom and then there you will see all the updates from me uh, from each week. Anybody have any trouble opening the link? No. All right, great. I'll give you guys a minute just to get logged in. Just got to hit the link and then I believe you just hit enroll. And then I already see some people starting to join uh, the classroom, which is great. So we got more people coming in as well. You have to just make sure hit the link and you will be coming on. Yep, so the Google Classroom will be used in order to house all of our resources. So if you guys go over to the Classwork tab, uh, let me share my screen. That's gonna be easier for you guys. So if we head on over to the Classwork tab, you guys will find right now there's not much information, but the Zoom links to all of our programs. And then every week there will be a weekly update posted with the YouTube video link and then uh, what we did that day. Andrew, hello. Looks like we already got people commenting. All right, so if you guys do have any further questions about the Google Classroom, feel free to message me or speak up. But uh, at this point, I think we have a bunch of people coming in and hopefully the rest of us will be coming there soon as well. All right, so now let's get to what this whole program is all about. And before we can actually get there, we got to start discussing our initial thoughts about when I say the word programming, coding, computer science. These are three technology terms that describe technology, right? Computer science, we got coding, programming. I want to hear, what do you guys think? What's the first thing which uh, comes in our minds when we hear these words? If you guys want to unmute, that is great. Or if you want to chat, that works as well. Computers. Immediately, yep, Andrew. Right away, you think technology, you think computers, definitely. 
already saying foundational script lines to actually start something in their internet. Avanish put it very poetically. Definitely, Avanish, script lines is something which we'll talk about. Script lines meaning code to make something or see something on the internet. That is 100% true. Anybody else? What's the first thing you think of when I say the word uh, coding or computer science? Kyle saying programming, yep, definitely. Maria saying ideas to the machine. Maria, that is very, very true. I'm glad you said that because all of our computers, which we will be working on these next couple of weeks, they're all machines. And we will have to learn how to communicate with our machines and how we have to be specific to the machines that we're talking to, how we have to tell the computer to do certain things so that we can get the output we want. Avani saying basically programming is a need because you want to make something more enhanced or efficient, like people update the internet every day. Avanish, 100%, that's something we covered in Tech Bytes as well. Uh, programming is needed to make something which we see on internet, apps, phones. So that's something that you're definitely hitting the head on. Uh, Kea saying JavaScript. Kea, that is a programming language. And, you know, we're talking about languages. The language which we'll be covering throughout these next couple of weeks, so we'll talk about more, is Python. But that is great that you know uh, or have heard about what JavaScript is. Anybody else, any thoughts? Minecraft is made from JavaScript. Yep, it is made from JavaScript, Avanish, and also a little bit of Java in different language. We'll talk about what languages mean, but definitely. So it looks like a lot of us here have somewhat idea of things we think about when we first hear these words of coding technology, uh, computer science. So it is a great foundation and We'll be building more upon of what this is as we go along. So here's a cool fun fact, which I don't know if uh, most of us are aware about, but 95% of all of the apps on the App Store of Apple and the Google Play Store for Android, they're all made with some type of code. Now, whether that be uh, code such as in Python language, whether it be different languages we're talking about, like JavaScript, Java, uh, Java code, basically makes up everything which we see on the internet and on the app store. So that's something important, which we will continue to learn about each and every week is programming, technology, computer science, it plays a very major role in our lives. And we'll see how websites are made from it, how apps are made from it, and a bunch of cool other things as well. Uh, Andrew asking what games I made. Andrew, I made a, a call about five, six, seven games for the app store. Uh, you can search them up. Uh, one of the fun games I made was called Space Endeavors. If you search up, if you, and you guys have an iOS device, like an iPhone, iPad, that's a fun game. It's sort of based on Flappy Bird, uh, if you guys want to check that out. Thank you for asking you. All right, so how about we watch a quick little video, and then we'll talk about more our thoughts and start seeing what we can create with Python and code. Isn't computer science just study of computers? Saying computer science is about computers is like saying being a doctor is about stethoscopes. Computer science began long before the modern computer. In fact, computers began long before the modern computer. We've always had tools like the abacus. But the word computer was used as early as the 17th century to describe people who completed calculations by hand as a profession. During World War II, most of our human computers were women, and some became our first computer programmers doing work that was critical in determining the feasibility of the hydrogen bomb. Science depends on observations of the real world and follows the scientific method. So computer science isn't really about computers, and it isn't even really a science. If that's the case, then just what is computer science? well as the study of data and computation on that data. In other words, computer science is about solving problems and how to solve problems better and faster. Let's look at Super Mario Brothers, not making it, playing it. We have the main character Mario who can run and jump through a level. The goal is to get to the end and touch the flagpole, but there are a bunch of obstacles in the way. Let's think of some interesting questions. 
Like, does this beat the level? Can I even beat this level? How do I win? And what is the fastest way to get through here? Let's look at the first two questions. Do these moves win? And is this level even beatable? Suppose someone claims to have a way to beat a level. It's pretty easy to tell if they're telling you the truth. All you gotta do is watch them play. They beat the level and they were right. And if they didn't, they lied to you. Can we just as easily figure out if a level is beatable at all? We know that there's a dumb way, just try all the possibilities, but you'll be sitting there playing Mario for a long time. Can we do it faster? It seems simple enough, but this question is known for being one of the hardest math problems that still doesn't have a solution. Answering this question definitively comes with an award of a million dollars. So who really cares about Mario? I mean, it's just a game, right? Well, what if I told you that hard Mario levels are all that stand between a hacker and your bank account? Don't believe me? Well, we rely on something called encryption to protect all of our digital information. Most encryption relies on the fact that breaking a number into its prime factors is hard. But if we can easily determine if a new level is beatable, that would also mean that prime factorization is easy. How these two are connected is a topic for another time, but studying these types of problems helps us to see the underlying way in which problems are connected. So computer science isn't all fun and games. It's vitally important to the world we live in, especially as everything in our lives becomes increasingly reliant on computation. Computer science is sequencing the genome so that we understand more about the human body. It's creating robust tools and realistic effects to allow artists to tell stories that they've never been able to tell before, and maybe even in brand new virtual realities. It's giving you access to the entire world's knowledge at your fingertips. It's bringing you closer to that long lost friend that you would have otherwise never seen again and creating a platform to let anyone share their ideas. It's finding ways to reduce our carbon emissions to preserve this earth for future generations. It's learning what lies in the next frontier and maybe even taking us there one day. Computer science is a lot of things, but ultimately it's about solving some of the toughest problems to propel us to the future. All right, that was a quick little video, which does a great job. I would like to see it uh, encompassing what the potential is with this idea of computer science and what we can accomplish. As you guys saw, there was a bunch of things discussed from not only being able to create apps for your phone, visit websites, but a much greater, on a much greater scale, do bigger things like with electric vehicles, self-driving vehicles. There is sending rockets to space. Everything on a daily basis revolves around this idea of computer science and technology. It plays a much, much really big role in our lives. And we'll be learning more about that in the coming weeks as well. So a quick recap of what we can do with this new skill of coding, which we'll be learning. Games, websites, apps for our phone. And most importantly, one of the cool things which we will eventually be able to do is help people uh, with the creations we create. You know, there is on an everyday basis, computer science is helping, for example, with uh, COVID-19. About a year ago, when coronavirus, the coronavirus pandemic was taking over, nobody knew that much about what COVID-19 was. Well, with computer science and technology, there was a specific thing which allowed us to scan uh, people's bones to see for early signs of COVID. Uh, there was something called a CT scan, which if you have parents or grandparents, they've probably had that done if uh, for bones or checkups for whatever case it might be done. You might have had one with yourself. And there was a, basically a pattern which could indicate how if somebody had a specific pattern, they were more likely to catch coronavirus than somebody else. So it goes to show us how COVID, uh, not COVID, uh, programming and coding has a very relatable and close impact to us on an everyday basis. Now, there are many different languages when we talk about coding and programming. All of them have their own uses. You guys, when you signed up for Introduction to Programming, you guys might have seen the description. We'll be talking about something called Python. More to come on that. But when we're choosing what language we want to create, we have to think about why are we making what we're making? Are we making a laptop or some type of physical application for a device? Are we making a physical phone or a desktop? It all depends on what we're trying to create. And today, for our purposes and throughout the next three weeks, we'll be using a programming language of just one, toning it down from a lot. As you guys can see, there's a bunch of programming languages. To name a few, we have JavaScript, we have Swift, we have C++, uh, Python. There's a bunch. But for today, like I said, we're toning it down for the next couple of weeks as well, choosing one, that one being something called Python. Have any of us here ever heard about Python or what the language is? Or what is a programming language in that case as well? I've heard of, a, I've heard of Python a few times. 
All right, Andrew. Do you want to elaborate? Uh, what have you heard about it? I don't really know. I just like kind of heard it around, and sometimes when I'm watching YouTube videos, I see like people talking about it. There are definitely many ads which come before videos uh, promoting uh, Python and courses like that. So great to hear. Anybody else? Oh, and each we've covered Python, right? Yeah. Anything you want to share? Many parts of, yeah, like many, many parts of just how starting to understand what we want, like how we achieve it, and like those terms, like what you need to achieve it, and how do you, just like the format and how do you write it? Yep. So throughout these next couple of weeks, for introduction to programming, we'll be focusing on more of the fundamentals of learning what specific things are and looking at block code and how that plays a role and then eventually making a transition to typing out code. But for this week, we'll be messing around with and seeing how block coding is similar as well. So what is the language of Python known for? Why are we choosing Python out of the many languages which we just saw? There was like 10, right, in that picture? Well, Python is mainly used on a very frequent basis and it's used for predictions, seeing how certain things we do and how they're related. If we go back to the idea earlier of the YouTube recommendation, right? If I open the YouTube app on my phone and go to my uh, recommendation feed, there'll be videos which are recommended based off videos I've watched in the past. Let's say for example, about a week ago, I was watching videos on uh, a new car. I wanted to buy a new car, right? Well, chances are that a week later, if I'm still watching those videos in my recommendation feed, I would see videos about that car. And that is something which Python helps us uh, accomplish. And Python is also very popular for organizing and seeing what we can do with data, seeing how we can analyze that data to make predictions. For example, if we take a look at something like prices of items or home, home prices, right? We want to predict how much will my house be worth in 10 years. We can use something like computer science along with the programming language of Python to predict how much will our home be worth in 10 years and how much will prices rise by. So the main thing is that Python is a language which is very data driven. We can do a bunch of manipulating, extracting, seeing how data is related, seeing how numbers are related. And with that, uh, we can do a bunch of cool things. And hopefully you guys will be seeing some of those cool things going down as well along with us. So with us having a foundation now built of what we will be doing with Python and what Python is all about along with this idea of programming languages, it's important that we know one more thing. I know that we went over a bunch of languages right here. If we take a look right here, there's many languages, right? And Python is the one which we're going to be focusing on. However, something important which you must realize is that it's probably overwhelming, right? To see there's so many languages. Is computer science that big of a field? Well, yes, but we have to take one step back. You see, languages in programming, you guys will learn, are like speaking languages. There's so many languages, right? There's English, uh, Spanish, Mandarin, you name it. There's so many languages which we can speak. Well, in every language, the only difference is that the way you say something the main idea is the same. So if I'm saying hello in English and I'm saying hola in Spanish or I'm saying ni hao, right? They all mean the same thing. They all mean hello. Well, similarly in programming, all of these programming languages, they all try to communicate with a computer to accomplish a task. The only difference will be how we communicate to the computer. Are we going to write something which looks a bit different to the computer? And that's something which you will realize between Python and JavaScript. The ideas and concepts will be the same. However, how we um, talk to the computer will be a bit different. So that is something important to know about and nothing to get overwhelmed, most importantly. Uh, Anisha, inputting is uh, one of the different things which is uh, prevalent between Python and JavaScript. Definitely, definitely. All right, so let's talk about our schedule for this upcoming weeks. Today, it was this introduction is learning about more what this idea of computer science is and technology and different programming languages learning how we'll be focusing on one called Python. Uh, we'll be doing a bit more today with Python, uh, uh, getting our hands 
in the computer abyss seeing what we can do in a website to sort of familiarize ourselves with Python. Next week, we'll be starting to focus more on the different aspects about what programming is. We'll be starting the next week talking about variables, uh, doing some mini lessons with that, some exercises with that as well. The third week, we'll be talking about what conditionals are, if else statements, learning what, how we can write them and how they apply in Python. And the final week, we'll be spending the hour creating a project, one large project together, which combines all the skills from the first three weeks. So that was a bunch of information. If you guys have any questions, anything you want to share, right now is a perfect time to do so. All right, the floor will be open as we keep on going. But for now, how about we get started and see how we can, what Python is, what coding is, and what block code is as well. I'm going to be dropping a link to a website in the chat. And if possible, if you guys have two separate devices at home, it would be great if you could open it on a different device. If not, that's totally fine. You can minimize Zoom and go to the link I'll be putting in. There's the link. And as we will be getting onto the link, you guys can just say continue and then be sure to select the Python 3 option. Python 3 means that we're on the third version of Python. Uh, just some differences. Python's like any language, you know, we're talking about English, there's new words, right, which are introduced in the language uh, on a yearly basis. There's new words added, right, which mean different things. Like in English, Python has new features added, things with coding, which uh, gets updated every year. And right now we're on uh, three point something, so that's good to know. All right, was everybody able to uh, get on the website? If you did, just give me a simple thumbs up so I know we're all good. Great, great, great. All right, great. Looks like we got it almost everyone. If you are not, just um, click the link and you hit the Python 3 option and you should be coming in. So as you first come into this area, this is going to be our block coding website for this upcoming weeks. This is where we're going to be learning about different pieces of data, different pieces which make up a programming in Python. And then eventually next month, we'll be getting started off with actually typing code. And that will be in the different language of JavaScript. But for this course, since it is more introductory based, I want to keep it a bit more lighter. And we'll be doing block code, but still learning about what specific things are able to do. Now, once we hop in today, I just want to sort of see and explore with you guys what everything is all about. We have a bunch of different tabs on the left. And this middle area is going to be our workshop area where we can drag and drop blocks in order to uh, make things happen. So we can do a quick little talk about with the most important tabs on the left. The imports tab is something which we'll learn about more, but basically, Import statements are ways for us to have more information and accessibility to things which we originally wouldn't have. So it's similar to say we are reading a, or say we're playing a video game, right? We need a certain power up, but we can't get that power up without purchasing a certain power up or having a certain number of coins within us, right? In our game. Well, similarly, how we can't purchase that power up and use that special ability in a video game, we can't use some functions without having these import statements. So for example, if we look at an import statement like random, this import statement allows us to make random numbers and see different types of, uh, we can do probability with this and uh, create generate random numbers is a, one of the biggest things which we can do with this random uh, import statement. Now, import statements are also referred to as libraries or modules, but that's something which I do not really want you guys to focus on. It's just something neat if you can pick up on. It's similar, like I said. We'll be talking about many analogies as we go along the, week, along the weeks because I think analogies are the best way to relate. So import statements, you can think of them being like a special power up. If we have them, we can do many more things in our program. All right, so next week we'll be talking more about what variables are. So stay tuned for that. But how about for right now, we 
go ahead and do one of our first ever programs or write one drag and drop one line of code. How about that, right? What I want you guys to do is go to the statements tab and drag and drop the print statement. Now, what if anybody had to take a wild guess, what do they think this one line, this one block does? What does it tell the computer to do? Avani saying print out hello world. Gabriel saying print the line. That is 100% correct. Yep, like the name implies, this line of code is responsible for printing out anything. So if I hit, we're saying uh, it gets it to write hello world. Yes, it does. That is 100% correct. Good job. Looks like all of us are aware. So now if I hit the run button, we get it. Is, so when we hit the run button, it should be in the top right hand corner. Hopefully everyone has access to that. If not, your screen might be minimized like this. You can just want to drag it out and then you should be able to see the run button, hit that. And whenever we hit run in Python, we are usually going to be seeing an output box somewhere where we can see the output of whatever program we wrote. And in this case, since we told the computer to print out something in the parentheses, we had the word hello world, we are printed out with hello world. Now we can go ahead and change this to whatever we'd like and notice how the word hello world is within two quotation marks. That is something important and something we'll talk about more next week of different data types and how quotation marks play a role in that as well with variables. So what I want you guys to do for the next minute or next two minutes is go through and add three print statements. The first print statement should say, uh, hi, my name is. Second print statement should say, uh, your age. And the third print statement should say, um, your favorite food. How about that? So follow the same idea. We're going to go straight statements and then drag and drop more print statements. And I want us to do three print statements, name, age, and favorite food. We'll take three minutes and at 358, we'll do a little show and tell our first ever program. Everybody understand the instructions? All right, great. Yep, so three print statements, our name, age, and then our favorite food. We're changing the text of the print statement to be whatever uh, pertains to ourselves. Take two more minutes, hopefully we're wrapping up.
We'll take one more minute. Alrighty, so uh, anybody want to share their screen and show what they're out? Okay. All right, Avanish, yeah, you should be able to share your screen. All right, so there we go. Yep. Rice and fish. All right, Avanish. So notice how Avanish has the three statements, and then he also added some spacing in between, right? Uh, to make his statements look nicer. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Avanish. Anybody else? I can do it. All right, Andrew, you should be able to share. Yeah, it isn't working. That is totally fine. Anybody else want to share? Sure, yep. Just go ahead. The screen option should be available, Kia, if you want to. Uh, you do not need to sign in to the website. You should not have to create an account, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I got it now. All right, great. 13 years old, fair food is pasta, all right. And let's see the code, yep, there we go. We got print statements and then some spaces to make it look nicer. All right, we got Andrew, 11 years old, hamburgers, yep. The floor is open. Anybody else want to hit the share button and share? All right, that's totally fine. I'll share my screen as well. Yep. There we go. My name is Randy Gasno. I'm 17 years old, and my favorite food is some deep dish pizza, Lumilati Thurgiano. So you cannot beat that, in my opinion. So if I hit run, like you guys, I will see an output there as well. Now, what this week is sort of right now is just we want to mess around and see what else is available to us. So now if I go into, say, uh, we can just, uh, without even knowing what these things do, we'll learn about what these do. But say if I go to a for loop, what this is, if I drag and drop all this code inside of the for loop and I change this number to an actual number, look at how many times we'll have stuff printed out to us. We got the same code printed out 10 times. That may or may not foreshadow what a for loop does. Anybody? Already know maybe? Uh, I know we have some people here who know what a for loop is. Anyone want to give some hints? Just like, um, if you just want to look repeat it, I think we just saw Ryan did it first hand. Like, he put I in range 10 and just popped up 10. This might be useful if you create an array or something and you want to pick out something for an array or you just want to pick one and keep repeating it. Definitely, Avanish, using that knowledge from tech bytes, that's 100% correct. For loop is something which we'll talk about in our third week before we make our project, project in the fourth week.
but a quick uh, little teaser, I guess, a for loop is something which allows us to do something, uh, do an action multiple times without having to write the same code that number of times. So instead of me having to write the, these three lines of print statements 10 times, that'd be 30 lines of code. Now I can just use a for loop and print out the same thing 10 times. Gabriel, jumping ahead too, saying a function that repeats itself to how many times uh, to run it. 100% Gabriel, that is definitely right. We can write how many times we want code or whatever we have written inside our for loop to run. And then we can see that repeated action go down. That is definitely right. We have some other things as well, which we'll be covering a lot called list. These are a way for us to hold many of the same variables, that term again, which we'll be talking more about next week in one area. So stay out for those as well. And in the next couple of days, I would highly recommend if you want to go back and go through uh, just dragging and dropping different things, seeing what they do, forming your own ideas. And the next two weeks, we'll be doing a crash course learning about what each of these things actually does, seeing how they're used in some mini exercises in the weeks to come as well. But there's a bunch of things starting from we have commenting code out. This is a way for us to explain what certain code does. We have input statements. These are a way for us to uh, ask the user for input on what they want, something, uh, what values they want, stuff like that. We have logic statements. These will be really important. We'll be talking about also known as conditionals for us to evaluate certain things. We have loops we just talked about, definitions we'll talk about next week as well. And then some of these later things will, we might get to, if not totally fine, involving some math. We have, I think this is uh, Blockly's own version of a turtle. No need to worry about that or what that does. We have some random numbers we can choose from. Blockly has that as well. And then some processing things. So main focus for us, if you wanna do, spend some independent time going through uh, adding these different block statements, seeing how they intertwine. Go to variables, statements, logic, list, and loops. These will be the main things. Uh, but in the next two weeks, before we get to the fourth week of making a project, we'll be covering a great number of things. And as a little hint as to what we'll be covering, next week we'll be going over uh, what functions are along with variables, doing some exercises with that. And then in the third week we'll be going over if conditional statements along with uh, loops seeing how those intertwine as well. Anybody have any questions to this point? Alrighty. So as we're going through, if there's anything else which you guys want to play around with, we can uh, maybe even do a little quick little test right here with the list. Uh, so if I drag and drop this, it's all going to be drag and drop based. We can print out the list and actually we're not going to get into the, the list. We'll hold off on that and we'll talk about uh, recap this week and then next week as well. So that's a little bit of a sneak peek, I guess you could say, for the next coming three weeks on this website of what we'll be doing and the different elements which we'll be playing around with. And a cool feature about this website is that you can save all the work we do. So I would recommend that if you want to, be uh, definitely create an account with uh, EDU Blocks, the website, and then you can save every week's progress we make so that you also have a copy. But I will be posting a link to the code each and every week for us uh, who miss the code or we're not able to get something down. Alrighty, well, that takes us till the end for this week's introductory program. Uh, of introduction to programming, literally, right? I hope you, all of you have signed up on the Google Classroom. If not, I will be dropping the link again uh, on the Google Classroom. But remember, that's gonna be the main method for us communicating. I'll be posting updates every day on that, along with what we have covered and what we will be doing. For next week, a little preview, like I said, we'll be learning about variables, learning more about what Python is and the different data types and how we can write more code. This week was just meant to sort of uh, become familiar with what computer science is, the capabilities and the awesome things which we can do along with uh, getting our hands wet along with uh, the coding website where we'll be spending some time over the next three weeks. Hopefully you guys had a good time and learned something new. And I hope that you guys are encouraged, recommend, I would love to see you guys at our other programs we got going on over the summer. Uh, hopefully you guys had a good time. Thank you guys for coming out. This will be posted on the Google Classroom and YouTube. And remember this week was the only week we started at 315. 
as a quick reminder, just because of some things I had going on, but starting uh, next week and all the other programs will be going on at our usual 2 to 3 o'clock, uh, 2 to 3.15. I hope to catch you guys then. See you guys. See ya, bye.